you know, of the seven films to go was in for the year 2016, I was actually going to end that realm with The Perfect Weapon because of the title. Because, hey, I remember that from the 90s with Jeff Speedman. It's a much better movie than your piece of shit's ago. But then I saw this one and the next one, Contract to Kill, which are his two latest movies for 2016. And these would be the last two reviews for Steven Seagal. I'll still do JCVD versus Seagal, my thoughts on who I like more and why. Fun discussion. And my final thoughts on Seagal. And the reason being, end of a gun is what the fuck I feel like. And I'm like, pull the trigger. <laughs> pull the trigger so I don't have to watch these fucking Steven Seagal movies anymore. Just pull the fucking trigger. Pull it. I mean, now he's in this phase of... It was the phase of shitty dubbing and every fucking fight scene had a shitty double in it. If there's doubles in these, then I'm just getting fucking blinded by it. Or there's so little action that you don't need the double. Because End of a Gun and Contract to Kill, they're not action movies. They're either a thriller or this is a heist movie, but a very boring, shitty heist movie. And this and Contract to Kill are such huge piles of nothing, it's going to be even hard for me to talk about anything. Other than also in this phase, he's more bloated than ever. He's got a fucking goatee. He's got these fucking sunglasses that he uses in more than one movie that's piss yellow. I'm ready to take it from him and piss on them and shove it back in his fucking face. Along with a fucking Big Mac so he can shut up. Because all he does when he's talking is mumbling. Hey, uh, my name's David Zagal. And, uh, and he talks slower. You think he talked slow before? He talks even slower now. And he mumbles so much you need subtitles. That and Contract to Kill and, well, shitload of others. I should, not even just these two, but... And his stupid fucking yellow, piss yellow sunglasses. You know what? They, they make sense. Because it's pissy. As in making me pissy. In a pissy mood. This, this is such a pile of nothing. He's out driving. And what's funny. There's one synopsis that says he's a... He works at a mall. Where the fuck did they get that? I'm like, what? Is he Paul, Paul Blart Mall Cop? And that's sad because Kevin James is in better shape nowadays than fucking Steven Seagal. And I hate Paul Blart Mall Cop. You want to see a good version of that? Watch Observer Report with Seth Rogen. But there's an, I don't know where that synopsis came from. No, he's out driving. He stops when he sees a woman getting abused by her boyfriend. Wants him to stop. The boyfriend won't. Punch, kick, head through a window. The guy shoots at Seagal. Seagal shoots him. They're in France. He gets questioned by the police. One of them is a personal friend of his. The girl wants his help. They get like $2 million out of the guy that he killed his car. He goes with his heist, which is not much of a heist. He just goes in, beats up a guard, gets the money, leaves, Pushes one guard who flies off. Looks like he's dead. But then, oh, thankfully they have a shot where he's alive. Director tries to be spiffy by this sequence. He has, what do you call that? Split shots. Where is in a shot here and a shot here and a shot here encompassing the screen. And I'm like, this movie doesn't deserve anything like that. All Seagull did was beat up a guy for 10 seconds, steal money, beat, push a guy off a balcony, almost kill his ass, and walk away. And then there was this funny comment. I got another uh, another review, because this guy had seen this movie, End of a Gun, and I want to read it. Michael Siggs, S-A-G-G-S. He does a robbery at a police car impound after he's in the car with this woman 
she asked him, did you get the money? And he said, yeah, you owe me some good pussy now. <laughs> you know what, Sado, after watching your fucking movies, you owe me good pussy. You made enough fucking money because you made 52,785 shitty directed video films and maybe a handful of decent ones. A lot more bad than good, but you made a shitload of them. You have enough money. I want some good pussy. I want it live, legal, and clean. Now I'm just thinking about pussy. I, my mind's fucking blank now. I, that's all I want to think about because I don't want to think about this movie, this pile of nothing. If I watched paint dry, that would be more exciting. If I literally looked at my wall, it, there'd be more to it because I'd be like, hmm, there's some lines on the wall. How many lines are there? That would get more brain cells in my head working. That would be more adrenaline pumping through my body from my head to my nuts. So after talking with the guard, he lets him go, and then the, not the guard, the crush by police does his little heist, and that line of dialogue, when he gets back with the money, you have a lot of the bad guys talking. Where's the money? Where's the doll? Where's this woman who's a shitty actress? She sucked. She looked pretty, but she sucked ass. Baddies are talking. Baddies find the bad guys. A lot of times I call them baddies, but B A D D I E S, baddies. But bad guys. They find the hotel where Sadol and the girls at. Sadol's not there. The girl's there. Sadol comes in shooting. Before that, I remember the bad guy saying, You're starting to bore the hell out of me. Yeah, exactly like this fucking movie. Little firefight, he bashes a guy through a wall, the girl gets taken, the French cop who's his friend, Sadol calls him. That's something about Sadol saved his life long ago. Again, once in a while, the movie does these split screens as if it's fucking spiffy. Sadol goes into the bad guy's place. The bad guy tells him, you've got balls. And Sadol goes, thanks for noticing. My girl here knows that for a fact. Please, Sado, I don't need to picture your balls unless they're in your mouth and sewed shut. So you and then fucking retire to Russia. We can do your fucking dances and all your other shit. Don't know what I'm talking about? Look up Russian Sado dancing. And you'll have a good laugh. You get more entertainment out of that stupidity than this. You have another little firefight, the bag he has the money in, this little explosion, little knife fight with a guy he stabs. Shoots the guy in the head, the main bad guy. The girl pulls out the gun because she wants the money too. She doesn't want to share with Sadol. Not enough to share. The French cop shoots the woman in the head. Sadol and the French cop. And the French cop says, like, don't trust the stripper. Because the only thing she wants out of your pants is your money. And him and Sadol drive off and they're going to have some money and that's it. That's literally the movie. Sadol driving, woman being abused, fights the guy. Questioned by police. Little heist where he just walks in, beats a guy for 10 seconds, steals the money, pushes a guy off a balcony, sleeps with the woman, which I don't know why I fuck anyone would look at Sado and be like, yeah, I want to, I don't get it, I don't get it. He, and the women are like two, three times his age. I'm like, is she 19, 20? I don't know how old. She's older than that, but still. Little firefight. Girl gets taken. Sadol asks his buddy, the French cop, to help. At the end, little firefight. Little knife fight with a guy. Shoots the bad guy. The girl's a bitch. She gets shot by the French cop. They leave. That's literally the entire movie. That's the entire fucking film. It's one hell of a boring, shitty heist film with barely any action. Barely any action. Takes his fucking time. Bad guys talking nonsense. And horse shit that you don't give a fuck about. So go more raspy. Talking slower. Whispering softer. More bloated. More fat. And more lazy and not giving a flying fuck. 
end of a gun yeah that's where your career is not only ended it's at the end of a gun to go so pull the fucking trigger and retire just retire from movies I don't want to see cameos from you anymore I don't want to see other movies from you anymore I'll, I'll do more than that when I get in contract to kill my final thoughts on Seagal. But I'm tired of your lazy as fuck shit. P you know, if some people like this stuff more than fan dams, direct to video stuff, teach their own. I don't get it. But hey, that's your. That's what you like. I'm not. I have no right to say you're wrong. Because you're not wrong. It's your opinion. My opinion, these. Most of these Seagull, 99% of these Seagull directed video films suck ass. Unless there's a handful like Urban Justice or Pistol Whipped or The Keeper, Bastion Conviction, they were alright. Uh, Into the Sun was alright. But most of these films fucking suck. And these later ones, they're just piles of nothing. You literally sit there in a daze and you go, did I even watch a fucking movie? What did I even watch? It's like I watch a shitty episode of a TV show nowadays. I, what did I watch? If you liked End of a Gun or Contract the Kill, please tell me why. You like Sigal's performance. You like that he's fatter and more bloated and more whispery and talking much more slower and mumbling for the fact you need fucking subtitles. You like the fact that he can't do his fight scenes anymore? You like the fact that if he did a fight scene in the last 10, 20 seconds? And he has one, two, three or four. I, I count on one hand. Let, let's be generous. Five. Teeny little things. I've seen episodes of the A-Team that they look like, and I like the A-Team show, and they look like the Transformers compared to this shit. And that was a fucking episode of TV show where they didn't even kill anybody, yet they were more badass. End of a gun. There's no reason to go longer with this review, this rant. It's a nothing movie. It's such a nothing film. If you, if you think I'm lying, going overboard, oh, it's not that bad, or yeah, you're making it worse, then you watch it, and you tell me. I, I would love to hear you in the comments. You can't hear it, you read it. Read in the comments. What about Sigal's performance? Does he not look bored out of his mind? Does it not look like someone sleepwalking and has more energy than Sigal in this movie? Does it not look like that he does not give a fuck and does not want to fucking be there? Name one scene worth a shit. One. One dialogue worth a shit. One fight scene worth a shit. If you can remember them. That's why I call this a pile of nothing. Just like the next film, Contract to Kill. Such a pile of nothing. And they perfectly capture what Seagull's career is at. It's a pile of nothing. Van Damme, at least he's getting some Kitbox of Vengeance. I don't look, I don't want to watch it, but that seems like a big enough movie. He's getting a sequel, and it's got Batista and you know some other guys in it. Amazon Pilot, that's pretty damn good, getting to be a series. He was in, I uh, did a voice in Kung Fu Panda Two, and that Split commercial was pretty pop popular. Doing the splits of the Volvo or whatever. I forget what it is. But it's the splits. This this shit just. So Seagal's career is dead as a doornail. It's been dead as a doornail for 15 years. He has not given a fuck in 15 years. Once in a blue moon, you get a halfway decent flick like Urban Justice or Pistol Whipped. One every ten, every, what, one every five movies? One every ten movies? It's not a good track record. Let's be fair, one every five movies? And he's made like th over 30 direct-to-video films? 
it's not good track record so end of a gun could go fucking shoot itself